Hello again, everyone. Aaron here. And last time we talked about the Cisco FTD API stack, and we provisioned an FTD fresh out of the box by using the provisioning APIs. In this video, we're going to be provisioning HA, a high availability, active standby, and we're also going to be configuring all of the interfaces. Again, uh, this would be sort of a follow-up from that script. This would be the very next script that we would run. Let's go ahead and log into the box that will represent our primary device in our high availability pair. And just to show you that it has the default configuration on it, there are the default IP addresses and interfaces enabled and the default high availability configuration is unconfigured. Uh, and again, here on the secondary box, we see once again, the default interfaces and default IP addresses are on the box with an unconfigured high availability system. Let's just take a quick look at that YAML file. Here we'll see all of our interface settings. These are the IP addresses and standby IPs that we wanna have put on our devices. In addition to that, we've got the HA configuration interface defined as the interface we're going to be using for configuration sync and for state information to be transferred over. And then finally, we have the HA configuration itself. And in the HA configuration itself, we see both the IP address of each end of the endpoint along with the state and configuration failover information. All right, without further ado, let's just go ahead and run this script. So this script is going to read the configuration from the YAML file. Uh, it's gonna take that configuration, uh, use the little API library that we wrote. Again, I'm just a hacker, but I did hack together some code and a little library to consume these APIs to go ahead and configure the HA system. We'll start by instantiating a version of our FTD API client. We'll set the host name. Then we'll go through and disable the onboard DHCP server that gets enabled by default. And then we'll go in and configure our interfaces and that'll set the IP addresses, the standby IP addresses, etc. And then finally, we'll go ahead and push that configuration and configure the HA system. Okay, so let's kick this script off. As you can see, the script is running and doing all the things that we described. Um, now, it does require us to push the interface configurations before we configure the HA system, because one of the requirements is that there are no pending configuration changes to be deployed. So that deployment takes a little time. Through the magic of video, I'm going to go ahead and skip forward a little bit to the end of the script running, and we'll just double check the work that was completed. Our deployments have completed for the HA. Total elapsed time for this HA configuration to complete from a default base configuration to a HA configuration that is fully configured with IP addresses and standby IP addresses is seven minutes and 47 seconds. We'll go ahead and log into the primary device. And as you can see, the uh, primary device high availability does show that it's been configured and that the standby device is currently in a failed state. Uh, it does take a little bit for the HA system to sort of come together and start syncing everything together. In the meantime, let's just check out the interfaces. You'll see that our primary IP addresses and our standby IP addresses have been configured. And we see that interface gigabit 08 uh, has been uh, uh, configured for high availability. We know that because we're not able to configure it here in the GUI. Now we also see now that the uh, HA system is sort of caught up a little bit and we see that it's currently syncing. So the uh, primary shows that it's currently the active unit and the secondary unit is currently receiving the configuration from the primary. We'll give that just a moment to complete its uh, syncing. In the meantime, let's just check out a few things. Uh, I think we'll see that there are no configuration changes waiting to be pushed. And thanks to this handy little CLI tool that they've integrated into uh, FTD 6.3 and above, we can actually go in and do a command line version to double check the configuration and the state of the HA system. I'm just gonna do a quick show failover, the good old show fail command. And let's just take a quick look at what our HA system looks like. Uh, what we'll see is that we've got standby ready uh, we've got the active unit having the active IP address, and we've got the standby unit with the standby IP addresses, which is just exactly what we'd expect to see. You'll also see that these interfaces are uh, you know, in normal status and currently waiting for uh, any kind of failover event. You'll also notice in the GUI that our high availability indicators show that we are still active, 
But now, rather than being in the sinking state, we're actually in a, in a standby state. So we now have a high availability system. So take a look at the sample code. The link to the GitHub repo is in the description of the video. And you can also uh, go through and download that code and do whatever you like with it. Remember, I'm just a hacker, but I uh, just thought I would throw this out there as a proof of concept on how one might provision and deploy a brand new set of firepower threat defense devices uh, using only APIs. No human intervention needed once that uh, YAML file is populated. All right, that's it for this video. Next time we'll continue exploring some of the uses of the API as one might deploy and manage one of these systems completely hands-free and GUI-free simply by operating everything through the API. See you next time.